Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. You know, there's a, there's a club in the premiership. Their motto is, may you not walk alone, something like that. Uh, may you never walk alone. Something, yeah. But, uh, you know, they say it after the natural order. Uh, this morning, are you thankful to God that you are not alone? Uh, that you have the presence of the Holy Spirit. He's, he's your guide. He's your teacher. He's a very present help in time of need. We do appreciate God with a clap offering this morning. That indeed you are not alone. And you know the beautiful thing, he has also put us in a family, a community of faith, where there's always a shoulder to lean on. So even though you are not part of the Liverpool uh, club, you have a family. I want us to do something very good this morning. Just rise on your feet and greet 10 people. Welcome them. 10. I'm counting. Welcome someone to church. Just give someone a pat on the back. Make someone feel very, very, very comfortable that you are in God's family. Indeed, we are not alone. If you are engaging online, please greet someone um, in the, in the, on, the, on the same platform with you say hello to them mention their name let them know that you see them let them know that you see them praise God hallelujah amen please help me appreciate the elevation priest of praise for that powerful reminder you know anytime we do an exercise like that you just watch out for the people that will sit down last and the people that will move farthest away from their seats those are the sanguines in the house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Uh, such a beautiful thing to be in God's house. How have you been enjoying the Fast Forward campaign? I hope it's been a refreshing experience for you. God has been good. Heavens have been open, and I know that there have been shifts. And God that has brought you this far, he will see you to the very end in Jesus' mighty name. Praise the Lord. Um, we're going to continue the conversation that we have been honest in the beginning um, of the year, very powerful uh, truths, very powerful um, prophetic word that God has released over us this year. This is our year of unusual elevation. And my conviction, my prayer uh, is that there will be no exception to this prophetic word in this house in Jesus' name. Um, it's, it's therefore important for us to uh, lay hold on that which um, God is speaking to our hearts this season, that we would run with these instructions, that we will not let them slip, uh, that we will meditate on them, that we will give ourselves wholly unto these things, that indeed our profit will appear unto all. Praise the Lord. That we will be doers of the word and not hearers only. So as we lay out these instructions, I want to encourage that we keep very great notes, that we go back to um, uh, the, the, the service sermons you can, you can watch on YouTube, you can order the messages from our resource center and listen over and over and over again. These words, these instructions will make a significant difference in your life. We have titled this one, Receiving Heaven's Signals. Receiving Heaven's Signals. Father, we thank you for your presence that is in this place. We thank you because we know that you are here to do us good. We know you are here uh, to strengthen us, to speak to our hearts, to cause us to engage with your wisdom that we may profit. We thank you, Lord, because we know you are here to heal, to deliver, to set free. And we ask that you have your way. Do all that you are proposed to do in our midst today. We choose to partner with you, Lord, and we declare, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We ask that you speak expressly to our hearts this morning. We prepare our hearts to receive your word, and we trust you for understanding. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Ah, that's your amen. It needs support. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Praise God. Um, so, so, we're going to be talking about receiving heaven's signal. And I, I believe that this is very central to our success as believers. This is very central to our effectiveness as saints. When God created uh, the heavens and the earth, you, you, you notice in Genesis uh, chapter 1, um, one of the first things that we begin to see God do is create day and night. You know, separate light from darkness, morning from evening. And when we go to Genesis chapter 8, if we can give me Genesis chapter 8 very quickly, one of the things that God made clear uh, after 
um, the, 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 the flood had destroyed the earth and God, you know, I was having a conversation um, post all of that. He said, while the earth remains, Genesis chapter 8, 22, it says, um, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not, what? Shall not cease. As long as this earth remains, as long as this earth remains, winter and summer, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, it says it shall not cease. Why would God say that? It was essentially saying that it is important that our interaction with this planet is guided by our understanding of times and seasons. Is guided by our understanding of times and seasons, that there will be times and there will be seasons. And it's important for us to recognize that as times and seasons change, there's a need for us to posture differently, to understand what is required of us. Um, and it is the same in the spiritual realm. It's the same uh, protocol. The natural things speak of spiritual things, that uh, in our uh, operation as believers, in our functioning as, as sons and daughters of God, we must understand that there are signals in the realm of the spirit. Every day is not the same. Every season is not the same. Every moment is not the same. Praise the Lord. When you see a believer that is not uh, postured, uh, is not sensitive to heaven's signal. They are the people that live without an understanding of the, how things are shifting or what God is doing, what is happening in their environment. They are not able to understand and discern properly how they should posture. They have no sense of what God is doing. They may not even have a sense of, you know, the things that they are seeing because they are not able to appropriately interpret it. It's important for us as Christians to understand that heaven is always sending signals. Heaven is always sending signals, but not everybody receives the signals. When Jesus uh, was born, the Bible sp uh, speaks about wise men who were in the east who said they saw a sign. Is it not interesting that people who are far away could see a sign that indicated that something had shifted, that a savior had been born, and a king had been born, a deliverer, and yet there were many people who were around Bethlehem. There were many people around Jerusalem. There were many people around the nation of Israel at the time that had absolutely no clue what was going on. Praise the Lord. You know, there was a time I, I, I sat down, I was just thinking, I was meditating, I was like, you know, to imagine that God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, uh, you know, from whom are all things, the one that formed this entire universe, came to the earth in person and lived for 33 and a half years. And some people did not know. Some people that were in that community did not know that God was around. Some people were probably his neighbors, did not even know that God was around. And I remember praying a prayer that day that, God, may I not be that numb to spiritual singing. How bad can it get? And that's what happens at times when we don't understand the fact that as we function and engage in this earthly realm, there are signals from heaven. These wise men from the east were able to pick a signal that a Savior had been born. And they immediately responded and they were able to, you know, locate him and worship with him. Praise the Lord. So we're going to be talking today about receiving heaven's signal. That is key to our ability and our capacity to enjoy unusual elevation. In... Um, 1 Kings chapter 18 from verse 41, again, picking up from this scripture that we have spoken uh, to again and again in the course of our teachings. The Bible says, then Elijah said to Ahab, go up, eat and drink, for there is the sound of abundance of rain. There was no sound of abundance of rain in the physical realm. There was obviously nothing that you could, you could have noted at the time to say that there was rain, that rain was about to fall. But Elijah picked signal in the spirit that heaven had okayed the end of the famine. I don't know whether somebody is listening to me this morning. That heaven had okayed the end of the famine and it was time to align with heaven to birth that experience. And so he said to him, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. This morning I want to ask you a question. What sound are you hearing? 
What signals are you receiving in the realm of the spirit? You know, it can be very confusing for our faith when there's no, no sound. I don't even know what God is saying about this situation in my life, about this scenario that is playing out. I just have no idea. It's like heaven is silent. No clue. No signal. It's almost like I don't even know what to pray about. I don't know what to press into. Everything is just quiet. Elijah could get into a place of prayer and pray with conviction because he heard the sound of an abundance of rain. We have, we have received a, a, a word that this year is a year of unusual elevation. What does that mean to you? How does that impact your business? What sound are you hearing concerning your family? What sound are you hearing concerning your business? What sound are you hearing as far as your career is concerned? What sound are you hearing as far as your investments is concerned? What sound are you hearing as far as your ministry is concerned? What new sounds are you hearing that is signaling that it's time for you to initiate something? It's time for you to step into something. It's time for you to end a particular season in your life and step into something else. Elijah said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. And therefore, we need to post differently and we need to behave differently. And we, we, we recall how he, he then went up the, to the top of the mountain and began to pray. You know, I always say to people, uh, after the order of what we learned from Kenneth he again, he said, prayer, faith begins where the will of God is known. Um, you, you've got to know what God desires before you can pray effectively. So, I mean, Elijah was already aware that this is what God wants to do at this time, and was able to position himself well. Praise the Lord. It is critical. It is critical that we are sensitive to heaven's signals. And so when we talk about the cloud that um, Elijah saw as he began to pray, uh, we, we, it's a symbol, it's a sign that confirmed that that which he was interceding about was about to, start to, 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 to take effect. Clouds are symbols of God's presence. God's presence will manifest as cloud of favor, cloud of, it can manifest as wealth, as mercy, as divine visitation, and all of those things. But many times, there are spiritual clouds that begin to form in our lives that we need to be able to discern. And I'm going to move quickly this morning to uh, speak about how we need to posture in order to be able to pick signals. How sensitive are you to God's signal? How aware are you of the significance of the seasons that you're in and what God will have you do? You know, many times um, we, we run on the assumption that um, God, how do I put this? God um, God always wants us to be on the go. So God said to um, the disciples, I want you to wait in Jerusalem until you are endued with power from an eye. Wait until you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The instruction is don't move until you get a signal to move. I want you to wait. There is a time to go. But right now, I need you to wait. And at times when God keeps us in that kind of position, I want you to wait. You, the, your next move will be born on the back of a divine signal. The children of Israel understood that. So there was a cloud that was walking with them by day. There was a pillar of fire that was with them by night. But they would not move until there was movement, until the cloud will move. And there are people who have moved prematurely out of uh, desperation, um, out of zeal out of um, a, a, a misunderstanding of the, of the timings and the sins of God for their life and have struggled where they did not need to struggle. They have moved ahead of God and they found themselves struggling when they did not need to struggle, largely because they were not sensitive to God's signal. How sensitive are we to God's signal? How aware are we of the significance of the seasons in our lives? God says as long as the earth remains, these times and seasons will not fail. But we need to know how to behave ourselves per season. Praise the Lord. So let's talk about the um, principal way by which we are able to pick signals. And it's the principle of watch and pray. Somebody say the principle of watch and pray. You know, one of the things I found out as a believer is that, um, and, and I want us to start the year with this understanding, spiritual things are not complicated. 
Let me say that again. Spiritual things are not complicated. Spiritual things don't need you to be intellectually savvy. And I think that is where the confusion is a lot of times because um, we tend to feel that this, you know, the solution must be as complex as the problem. I don't know whether I get my point. So in, when we are dealing with complex situations, we expect the solution to just be as complicated. And when the solution comes too easy, we junk that and we look for something that's more complex. When I look at how many believers posture where life in the spirit is concerned, I am puzzled how we leave the rudimentary, fundamental, basic things that will make the difference. And we chase things that are of little consequence. So the simple thing they taught us in our kindergarten, read your Bible, pray every day. It's still a problem for some people today. I don't know what I get. If you want to grow spiritually, read your Bible and do what? Pray every day. Faith comes by hearing, hearing God's word. You know, um, as simple as that is. People struggle to do that. But we may want to do the more complex thing, you know, that makes us come across as, you know, spiritual juggernauts and ignore the simple, simple things. They, to be sensitive in the spirit, this, the principle is simply to watch and pray. To watch and pray. As simple as this is, it positions you whether you are a PhD holder, whether you are an undergraduate, whether you are educated formally, two formal education, you are not education, educated formally. You know, it positions you for a life of effective progress. Luke chapter 21, verse 36 to 37. Jesus was speaking here. He says, watch there, therefore, and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. He was talking about, you know, the things that will happen in the latter days. And he says, watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass. Praise the Lord. Watch therefore and pray always. Watch therefore and pray always. Watch therefore and pray always. i like us to turn to um, the book of Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 17 to 18. Ephesians chapter 6 from verse 17 to 18. Just to uh, further drive home this point. Ephesians 6, 17 to 18. And the Bible says, and take the helmet of salvation. It was talking about um, the armor of God. I'm sure you recall that scripture about putting on the whole armor of God. And then in verse 17, it said, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Praying always and being watchful. Praying always and being watchful. Jesus also said, watch and pray. Watch and pray. It is important for us to recognize that God wants us to be watchers. What does it mean to be watchers? God wants us to be, to observe with keen interest what is going on around us. God wants us to observe with keen interest what is going on in the, in the unseen realm. So there are two dimensions to watching. Watching can mean paying attention to what is going on in your environment and ensuring that you are able to, you know, connects that with what God is said to do or what God wants you to understand so that you can position right. What does this famine indicate, for example? Uh, what does this challenge, this news that we're hearing in town, what, is the, what does it really mean? I am watching with keen interest. I'm not just uh, peddling news. I am I'm positioning myself to be able to properly discern what is going on around me. I am watching uh, by paying attention to what is going on, but tr trusting the Holy Spirit to give me discernment. Many times we observe what is happening, we may gist about what is happening, but we do not properly discern what is happening. Is somebody with me? So there's, there's, there's a situation in your organization, and everybody's talking about it. There are people who will not even care. Some people may not even be aware of certain things happening around them because they are not keen watchers. They don't pay attention. And some people know what is going on, but they give the same interpretation to it that everybody else has given it. I don't know whether you get what I'm trying to say. 
Yeah, that people who, what is happening in Nigeria now, how it is happening, and how it is understood and explained by everybody is all the insights that they have. The Bible says there was a famine in the land. And Isaac sought to go to Egypt. And God said to him, this, this famine is not famine for you. I want you to abide in this land and I want you to sow in this land. And the Bible said he sowed in that land. And in the same year, he ripped a hundredfold. Even though it was famine for everybody, it was not famine for Isaac. Is somebody with me this morning? So, watching means paying attention to what is going on around you, but ensuring that you, your, your interpretation and understanding of it is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And this season that we're in, God is raising a company of watchers and a house of prayer. People who are going to rightly discern what God is doing, who are going to rightly discern the season, who are going to rightly discern what God is set to do, and who are going to position for it. When you pray as a watcher, what it results in is intelligent, spirit led interpretation of physical occurrences. Watching that is backed by prayer results in intelligent, spirit-led interpretation of physical occurrences. And that is what happens when we watch and pray. Intelligent, spirit-led interpretation. Intelligent, spirit-led interpretation. Praise the Lord. You know, in Daniel chapter 2... Um, the, and I've shared this story before. Daniel was um, informed that King Nebuchadnezzar had instructed that all the wise men should be killed. Everybody should be killed because they could not interpret his dream. And, you know, everybody was running helter-skelter. The Bible says that Daniel sought the audience of the king and he asked that he should be given time that was going to come back with the interpretation of the king's dream. At the time Daniel was taking that posture, there was no guarantee that it was good. He didn't know what the dream was. He had no idea what had happened. But you see, when you are someone who watches and prays, you have the correct interpretation of what is happening. That was going to be an opportunity for Daniel and his colleagues to be distinguished. You know? And while what was natural was for you to pack your bag and run to the nearest city where they would not find you, Daniel's interpretation of what was happening was different. As we, as we step into this year and, you know, trust God for unusual elevation, we need to be able to rely on the Holy Spirit to help us interpret things right. Because darkness will still cover the earth. I don't know what, uh, some people, you are already getting discouraged. And the year is just starting. Because what you thought was, and that's always the way, we, you, what you imagined was, like, everything would just change everywhere. And it would be, you know, fun and enjoyable and beautiful and, you know, everything will just manifest as your desire. But many times, what may appear will not look, may not look like what you expect, but what you expect is embedded in what is appearing. Praise the Lord. So, things may not exactly look like what you expect, but God is already working something out. Elijah said, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain and there was still famine. When we watch properly, it provides a link between what we see in the place of prayer and what we see on the outside. It's important for us to be watchers. And I'm just going to emphasize this very quickly before I move on. It's important for us to be watchers. Um, when, you are, when you're a watcher, you're not just praying. You're also engaging God to make sense of what's going on around you, to make sense of what's going on on the outside. When you're a, when you're a watcher, you are not just praying, you are sensitive to the goings on around you. You have information. You may not be able to interpret it, but you know what is happening. Praise the Lord. One of the things that I observe with many Christians also is uh, some Christians isolate themselves. They don't even know what's going on. They don't have a sense of what is happening around them. And when you are like that, of course, um, there is a limit to how you can intentionally engage God for interpretations. So I want to show us this prayer and watching matrix to sort of just unpack all I have said so far. 
And what I want you to do this morning is sort of just locate yourself in this matrix. Just locate yourself. Well, where am I? There are people who, so we have the prayer uh, axis and the watch axis. There are people who are high prayer, uh, low watching Christian. The high prayer, low watching Christian is a, pray, is a kind of Christian that will pray and pray and pray and pray and pray, but doesn't have a clue what is going on in the environment. Doesn't have a clue what is going on in their community. Doesn't have a clue what's going on in their organization. Doesn't even have a clue what's going on with their children. He's the kind of Christian that will pray and pray and pray. Uh, wants to get a job. Has prayed for favor. Prayed for utterance. Prayed for uh, supernatural help. Supernatural grace. But will not go to the website of the company to check out what they do. <laughs> Praise God. He's not going to ask anybody, uh, you know, um, that look for anybody that works in an organization to get a sense of, you know, what the organization is like. You know, there are people like that. PG told us a story a while ago that I found really hilarious. And there's a story of um, some guys that wanted to go on evangelism uh, in a particular community, an island. And they had gathered and they had prayed and they had fasted and they had, you know, they, they, they trusted God for a massive harvest of souls, that there will be a, the move of the Spirit, that the healing power of God will flow, that people will be saved and delivered, you know, and that there will be mighty manifestations of the gift of the Spirit. They fasted and they prayed. And on D-Day, they boarded the boat that was going to take them to the island, you know, packed all their stuff. And they hired, uh, this, this boat was hired. And as we were going on the, on the river, they were singing and praising God and thanking God for victory ahead of time and all of that. So one of the um, guys on the boat, out of zeal, you know, and, and curiosity, tapped to the boat driver and said, ah, how many, you know, people on that island safe? Because we're trusting God for a massive harvest or so. The guy said, people... Say yes, how many people on the island? Yes, there are no people on the island. I said, I thought people were going for a picnic. There's <laughs> nobody on the island. You know, I, I, how hilarious is that? <laughs> that people can be fasting and praying for massive harvest or so in an island where people do not exist. You know, and at times that is that is the way some believers act. You get what I'm trying to say? Um, very invested in the spiritual activity, but not in touch with the reality. You are running a business. You are praying for the business to grow. You are praying for the business to thrive. You are praying for the business to flourish. But you don't even understand the market. You're not, you're not reading anything that gives you any insight of what the market is like, of the trends. You are very um, ignorant of the issues with your clients. You don't know anything about your competition. You don't even understand the trend on the market. Yet you are praying. As ridiculous as the story I just shared is, that is your scenario. You are going for evangelism on a barren island. There are people who are professionals. You're, 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 you want to put your career on the fast track, yet you are not interacting with you know, the kind of body of knowledge that will give you a sense of you know, what, what the, the, the latest ideologies, the latest concepts in that field. You are not looking at better ways and identifying better ways that you can deploy yourself or deploy solutions in that organization. Praying without watching, it leads to frustration. It leads to frustration. It makes it look like God is not faithful because there are things that God wants to show you, but you can't see it because you are, you are not positioned to receive signals. Praise the Lord. Is this message hard or is this just for service people that are fasting and not waking up very well? Which one? Help me. The message is hard. No. Okay, so let's pray together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But is somebody feeling me this morning? Yes. Yeah. It leads to frustration. And there are many Christians today that are frustrated. And it, they make it look like God is not faithful. But God is not going to do your part for you. I don't know when I get my point. God ain't going to do your part for you. You've got to be informed. You've got to be enlightened. You know there are ways that the Holy Spirit might have been telling those people... That island is barren. There's nobody there. But they did not hear. Because they didn't know to look out for stuff like that. Have you seen people who want to marry before? Um, in marital destiny. Let me just speak to single people. Who spiritualize everything that has to do with their decision. I have had God. I think we are compatible. I have the peace of God. That's the one that is most hilarious. <laughs> I feel the peace of God concerning me. That, 
I just don't know. We got to teach on the peace of God. <laughs> because many people are confused with this peace of God thing. Uh, many times our emotions can deceive us. You know, I have the peace of God. And heaven is flashing signals, red light, red light, red light. You are seeing stuff that you are not paying attention to. And God is using to speak to you. Uh, this marriage will give you headache. Because this person you're about to marry is a self-seeking, insensitive, wicked person. Who is just cultivating you now because he has strong feelings for you. But when the jungle matures and it shows its true nature, you, will, you begin to say, God, why? <laughs> but the thing is that those things are coming out here and there, yet you are not seeing it. That's what the problem is. Because heaven will always send you what? Signals, signals, signals. And I tell people, part of the way God speaks is through signals. And not everything will not happen in the place of prayer. An angel will not always appear to you to tell you everything. You're, there will always be signals. Look at Jacob. Jacob was with Laban and his time was up. But the first set of signals he started getting was the change in the attitude of Laban's children. Things were happening around him. And the Bible says, you know, like, what's going on? And God appeared to him and said, it's time to leave. But there was a signal. I don't know whether you get what I'm trying to say. There are always signals to, to, to let you know that a season has ended, to let you know you're on track, to let you know you're not on track, to let you know you need to posture differently. So when you pray and you do not watch out for signals, you are likely to be frustrated. Let's move on very quickly. What about the person that does not uh, pray and does not watch? That one is very simple. You are going to be defeated. The one that is praying is not watching. The mercy of God is even still there to, to bear you up. You know, but the one that does not pray and does not watch is just going to be a cheap victim, cheap victim of life, cheap victim. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. I'm not even going to dwell on that. So if you are not praying and you are not watching, please repent. <laughs> the next one is low prayer, high watching. There are some people like that. They live on CNN. They are watchers. <laughs> they live on the tabloids. They live on social media. They know what is happening. They, wake, they brush their teeth with Bella Niger. You know, the news is always, you know, they're always, they, they are, they are, how do you call it, they, they be the first to know. You know, they like to be the first to know what is going on. They're on top of every gossip. Before you start, they just say, I've had it, I had it before you, I had it yesterday. They know stuff, but they are just a, an encyclopedia, if you like, of gist, no interpretation, no understanding. And when you are like that, what begins to happen is, you, as a believer, you, it's easy for you to begin to subscribe to conspiracy theories. You know? It's easy for you to drift into superstition because you begin to make all sorts of extrapolations. You're, you're going to begin to, you know, draw all sorts of strange inferences with your natural mind. You're going to create trends from your own natural perspective. And you begin to say stuff. And I've seen people like that just slip into all sorts of strange, strange ideologies. You become very superstitious when you are a watcher, that a, a Christian who is a watcher but does not pray. It is very easy for you to move from being spiritual to being superstitious when you're a Christian that watches but does not pray. And the devil has a way of sowing ideas and thoughts into our minds. And there's a difference between spirituality and, you know, uh, superstition. Praise the Lord. When you're superstitious, you, you see God as a magician. When you're superstitious, you believe in the spiritual, no, but not with a spiritual understanding. You, are, you, you, you have your own perspective to spiritual things. And it's often informed by, you know, the happenings around you and the things that you have heard and the movies that you have watched, and the experiences of others that you have had, you just come up with all sorts of things. Praise the Lord. And then, of course, we have the high prayer, high watching believer. And that's the person that works in perpetual victory. That's the kind of person that knows how to discern the times and season. That's the person that, you know, um, it, 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 like the Bible says in Psalm 23, even though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. I understand the purpose of that season. I know what God is working out. That's the kind of person that, um, you know, 
even when he's going through a tough situation, you know, understands that they are not alone, understands that God is causing all things to work together for their good, and they know how to behave. May that be you in the name of Jesus. Can I say this before I move on? And it's very important. This message is so critical to our journey because um, there are things that will look similar, but they are not similar in 2023. They are not similar. I was having a conversation with, I just want to say this to someone. I was having a conversation with our son um, last year, and I said to him, I said, not all exams carry the same weight. Your second term DS2 exam is not as significant as your WIEC. I don't know what I, they are both exams, but they're the same kind of exam. You can, you can, you can fail your second term DS2 exam, and it does not affect your promotion. And the truth is that that exam will be forgotten somewhere down the line. I said, but I, I went and picked my WIEC certificate. I showed him. I said, you'll be surprised that I still have cause to show this certificate. As old as I am, this certificate accompanies me for the rest of my life. I said, exams are exams, but not all exams are the same. As you grow in life, you, you need to understand the difference between the exams that you are writing. There are exams you cannot afford to fail. Praise the Lord. There are things you cannot afford to trivialize. They may show up the same, but they don't mean the same thing. They don't mean the same thing. We've got to be able to pick signals. What is the, what meaneth this? What is the significance of this is in my life? How seriously should I take this? Well, we're telling some people to fast now. It looks like we are putting them under pressure. The difference will always be clear. You know, when, when I, I saw, I was saying to him, I said, he was, he was, we're having that conversation. I was praying for his wife, and now he's in the university. And I was saying to him, I said, they are now, because you have come of age and you are in the face of your development, the things you do now have greater consequence than five years ago. And I said, many people crossed into this age without that counsel. And they were behaving like they were still 12 years old, 13 years old, 14 years old. Like, when you continue to think like that at this age, you will be shocked at the consequences of your actions. You will be startled. And you'll be wondering, but I used to do this and get away with it because you were much younger. When I was a child, I thought as a child, the system could accommodate childishness. But when I became a man, I had to put away childish things. The, 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 the phase of life I am in cannot accommodate childish things. The consequences are dire. And what I'm saying to someone is, as you press into this season, you cannot walk into this year thinking like last year. If you are enjoying certain graces last year that you could just do anyhow and do anyhow, and you won't continue like that, God forbid that a major exam will stare you in the face and you will treat it like what you have always done in the past. It is time for us to be discerning of what God is doing. As much as people say you can fail forward, failure is not the end and all that, what if Jesus failed? Praise the Lord. I don't know whether you get my point. What if Mary failed? There are times when failure is not an option. That's what I'm saying. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you for encouraging my ministry. <laughs> so, watch and pray. I'm going to l l wrap up in maybe five, seven minutes and talk about signal blockers. What are the things that are major signal blockers? So we know that we, we, we are able to pick signals as we watch and as we pray. But what are major signal blockers? Number one, is I'll talk about two of them this morning. Competition, comparison, and copying others. Competition, comparison, and copying others. James 3, 16 to 17. For where envy and self-seeking exists, confusion and every evil thing are there. Where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Many times, um, we begin to become numb and insensitive to signals when we judge our life based on 
what another person is doing, when we become envious, when we, we, we copy other people, when we use other people as the standard that guides our life and informs our choices. Especially in the advent of social media, for many people, the social media has become the voice of the Holy Spirit. As in, it just looks like when I see X do this, then I have to do it. That's God saying I should do it. You know, whatever I see someone do, you know, on social media becomes what I begin to aspire to. Like, we allow other people to dictate the pace of our lives. Everybody is running their race. Everybody has a unique path to follow. You know, I tell people that you are in, this, in the same class with people does not mean that you are in the same season of your life. Praise the Lord. You know, the world system has a way of putting us in a situation where we tend to compare ourselves with ourselves. It is a natural thing that we must depart from. You, you, you start primary school, you are in the same class, you move from primary one to primary two, you are all promoted at the same time until you get to primary six, you go to secondary school, the same thing. And that sort of begins to set the, you know, the tone for how you think about progress, how you think about success, how you think about achievement. Like, because we are classmates, um, what is happening in X life is supposed to happen in my life. If he's gotten a due job, I should get a good job. After all, we are classmates. If he's gotten married, I must get married. After all, we are age mates, we are classmates. If he now has bought a house, I must buy a house. After all, we are classmates and age mates. If he has a, a child or two, I must have a child or two. After all, we are classmates. We are age mates. I don't know whether I get my point. We tend to run the calendar of our life based on how the world has structured progress. But God sees you as an individual. God has a plan and purpose for your life. You are a distinct being and you have a unique journey. So even though we are operating within that system, you can't afford to program your life according to another person's you know, calendar. And many people... I have stopped hearing God's signal because that is how they have tuned their mind. I want to keep up with the Joneses. If it is happening for them, it must happen for me. What they are doing now is what I must do. I, I must do. If they have relocated, when are we relocating? If they have jackpot down, maybe we should jackpot down. I don't know. Do you get what I'm trying to say? And at times we put pressure on God largely because we are measuring ourselves with another person. We are envious of another person's result. But God has a unique path for you. And you see, it takes a lot of confidence in your God and surrender to his will to not allow another person's success, to not allow another person's progress to hold you back. Not only that, I also see that problem with successful people who measure their success relative to the people that, you know, when you are the, the one-eyed king in the city of the blind, complacency sets in. Your journey is a lot farther. But because you are in the midst of people who you feel you are doing better than, you have, you have settled. You have started slowing down. You are no longer driven. And God is saying, but I have given you this grace so that you can run. You are not there yet. You are far from what I've called you to be. You have lost your sense of hunger because people are applauding you and praising you. And you can't see anymore. Many times when we compare, whether as a very successful person materially or not, what happens is we lose track and we lose sight of God's expectation. Have you seen, did you look at all the people, the celebrated characters in the Bible. How many of them in life were patterned in the same order? Somebody became, you know, king, 18 years old. I mean, somebody became king, 30 years old. Somebody, God called him at the age of 75. Doesn't really matter. What is critical is what God wants to do through each individual's life. I hope you're getting my point. So the question is, are you running your race? Or are you running another person's race? Because even if you win the race, if it is not your race, there is no price. There's no price when you run another person's race. Praise the Lord. So, trends, many people are trend-driven and not faith-driven anymore. It's a trend. This is what's trending now. That's what's informing the kind of business I do. That's what's informing the choices I'm making. You know, there's nothing wrong with trend. Like I said, we need to watch. But what is God saying? Traditions, Jesus said, the traditions of men make the word of God of no effect. Tradition encourages us to compare a lot and put ourselves under pressure. I won't just say this to someone. And, and prevailing mindset, prevailing mindset, tradition and prevailing mindset. Let me just quickly say this. Ah, you've got, you got to allow God to guide you as to how to raise your children. 
You're going to allow God to guide you because your child is peculiar. You're going to allow God to guide you as to how you lay the foundation for your marriage. The, the things I see people do now, you know, marriages are crazy expensive these days. Not because what you do before you get married is what secures your marriage. It's just because people now feel they are, there's a, marriage is now a production. So when somebody says, I want to get married, the thing that in the Old Testament, they would just carry a wife to come and meet you, and Bible say he took her to his tent. We agreed, you know, <laughs> and it's over. Now, the process starts from proposal. There will be camera, there will be balloon, there will be this, there will be that. To even say, will you marry me? Is a project. <laughs> then the marriage itself is like a movie. I went to conduct one joining. I didn't know whether I was were joining these people or they were producing a movie. Because even me, they were pausing me, like almost like it was takes, takes. You know what it takes is like, Pastor, we need this angle. We need that. I'm like, are we joining? <laughs> what is all of this? We were under a gazebo in hot sun. And the way we dressed, I, was, I, was, I felt I was cooking on the inside. Because the idea did not even match our weather. The, the bride was dripping in sweat. They were quickly, because they needed the, the, the makeup to stay intact. And I was just like, what are we doing? What are we doing? But, so that I would not be the one to mess up the marriage, I had to cooperate as a <laughs> stand like this. The husband wanted to play the wife in, you know, we did all of that. And I could just see the cameraman, the producer was like, this angle, that angle, that, that's, that's, you know, that as beautiful as it, it does not guarantee that that wedding will be successful. That marriage will be successful. That's the problem. And many people are under pressure to That's what they're invested in. That's why somebody has not gotten married yet. And God is saying, your mental destiny is slipping away. And you're still trying to put up budget for a production. <laughs> Wake up in 2023. Wake up. Comparison is paralyzing destinies. It's more severe than we imagine. People are owing money now. They're in heavy debt because they wanted to live up to expectation. You are doing a, a, a child's wedding. You are doing the first year birthday of your son. You are doing a funeral and you do more than yourself because I remember when we went for Joe, I cannot do less than what Joe did. Are you Joe? Did Joe please God? <laughs> you know the person has gone to heaven has gone to heaven or hell as the case may be. What I'm trying to say is that don't be foolish. We got to understand that we are running a race. Let everybody wearing is called dear in abide with God. Live your size part time. Understand that you're on a unique journey. Even if you desire it, but it's not affordable now, you know what? A time is going to come when you can afford it. But live your size part time. Don't be under pressure. Don't be under pressure. And part of your proof of your uh, if you're a man, I'll call it your manhood, that you're a man, that you have spine. And part of the proof as a woman that you are, you are um, how will I put it, you're self-aware, is how you deal with these pressures. You are not a man if you will succumb to expectations of your friends and your peers to do stuff that you can't afford or to do stuff that is really not you. You're not a man. I don't believe in a man. The proof of your manhood is I can't stand and say, this is how I'm going to do it. It doesn't matter. Praise the Lord. I don't have time. I was going to share one or two stories, but let's move on. Praise God. Somebody, somebody I hope you're getting something from, from this one. Now, in the second part is carnality and complacency in the spirit. Carnality and complacency in the spirit. Hebrews chapter 5 from, from 11 to 14 says, Of whom we have much to say. And hard to explain, since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. And you have come to need milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness. For he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. Uh, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. This scripture is so powerful. And it begins to help us understand the connection between the word of God and soundness of judgment. And soundness of judgment. It says solid food belongs to those who are full of age. 
That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised. There is a way um, you're engaging the meat of God's word helps you to develop your spiritual senses and your capacity to discern good and evil. And when you see a Christian that is not invested in the word of God and, and, and you know, begins to slip into carnality, it's very hard for you to pick signals. It's very easy for you to be deceived. It's very easy for you to be confused. The word of God is light. The Bible describes it as lamp unto our feet and light unto our path. When you fellowship with the word of God, you have clarity of thought. When you fellowship with the word of God, something that you begin to notice is soundness of judgment. I just know, the Bible says concerning Jesus, he knew what to do. I'm just never confused. I just always have an idea of the path to go, largely because I am fellowshipping with the word of God. Canality blocks our capacity to pick signals. It blocks our capacity. It's a signal blocker. It's a signal blocker. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. This is how it describes it. It says, can you put that up for me? 1 Corinthians 2, 14. It says, but the natural man, it says, does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. Spirit, things of the Spirit are spiritually discerned. So when I am natural in my thinking, when I don't allow the word of God to dwell in me richly, I, am, I lack capacity for discernment. I lack capacity for soundness of judgment. And it many times is not always about just right and wrong. It's all, also about choices I need to make between many good things, between many good choices, but being able to identify the good path that God wants me to follow. I don't know whether I get my point. With a believer, it's not always just about right and wrong. It's also about choices. Is this time for me to leave this job? Or is there still some, something for me here? Who should I partner with? Is it time for me to leave this country? Or is there a still opportunity for me here? What is informing my capacity to make that judgment? Where should I, our, our child, you know, um, which school should our child go to? It says, by reason of use, you have your... Your senses are exercised. They are, de they, are, they are developed enough for you to be sufficiently discerning of what God is doing. You know, one of the experiences I've had that has been such a blessing to me as a believer is just that discernment where you can sense what the will of God is concerning a situation, concerning an issue. You can just sense, and many times I don't know how to explain it. It's just an impression in my heart. You, 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 you wake up into it and you just sense that this is what God will have you do. You sense that this is the path that God will have you follow. As you pray, you, you, you get a strong impression. At times, you're just this vivid clarity in terms of perspective. That this is, and as you follow that, you begin to see God. You begin to see God. You begin to see God. God wants to guide us this year. But we've got to do a way with signal blockers. And that means that we've got to get into the word of God. We have to develop fellowship with the Holy Spirit. As we engage God's word, the Bible says that our capacity to be able to discern will be improved. So avoid spiritual dullness. Avoid laziness. Pay attention to your spiritual maturity in 2023. We are going to be making decisions on a daily basis. Pay attention to your spiritual maturity. Spend time in the word. Engage a Bible plan. Because one of the things that leads to complacency is when your spirit is not fed. When your body is, is better fed than your spirit, you're going to be complacent. When, you're, when your body is more fed than your spirit, you're going to be insensitive to spiritual things. When your body is more, better fed than your spirit, your spirit is not going to be strong enough to be able to bear things and to be able to you know, discern what God is doing. So, so set up a very simple routine this year as the solution to this. How many chapters of the Bible will I read in a day? What, what, what Bible study plan should I subscribe to? Let's make it very simple. Some people are still using devotionals that will give you just one verse of scripture to read. It was good for last year, but 
Bible is talking about strong meat. Praise God. If I ever go to progress to strong meat, and as you grow in life, you know you need, you need, a, a, you cannot be living on the recipe of a baby and expect that you're going to be able to lift the weight that an adult will carry. So it's the same thing in the spiritual realm. You have to continuously increase your capacity to take in spiritual food and to take in more, you know, um, uh, you know, more complex things in the spirit. And so Paul here was complaining. You guys, you can't continue to be at this level. It's not okay to just read the Bible because they said we should read the Bible. I need to get into deeper truths. I need to be able to understand, you know, deeper realities. I need the Holy Spirit to take me on a journey so that my understanding is expanded. I have more depth. And that informs my ability to interpret life. That as I step into certain seasons of my life that requires a perspective, I already have the capacity resident in me to be able to understand and discern what is going on. It takes that journey in the spirit. And as we press into deeper, more complex things, we need to understand that that capacity is important. So this is the time to build it. This is time to invest in it. This is one of the most important, most significant investments you can make into your life this year. Getting into the Word of God. Listening to messages that would expand your mind. Reading books that would give you greater understanding and help you to better grasp, better grasp some of the principles of God's Word. So that when you find yourself in that situation, you are speaking from the things that God has revealed to you. You are, you are processing what you are interacting with based on the insights that you have gleaned from God's Word. And then you are able to easily Descend what God will have you do. That, I believe, will lead us to the path of unusual elevation. I hope somebody is blessed this morning. Hallelujah. You want to put your hands together and give a praise for his word? I'd like to pray with us this morning. And my prayer is that if there's anyone here who's not able to receive signals. There are areas of your life where it just seems like there's nothing. There's no, um, you're not able to discern. You're not able to get a sense of what God is doing. You're not able to appreciate um, the, the plan of God, the purpose of God, um, that something will begin to shift from this morning in the name of Jesus. And I wanted to pray specifically about that area. Maybe for you, it is that you have not spent enough time actually praying about it. Or maybe for you, it's that you're not watching. It's that you're not watching. You need to set yourself to watch. You need to set yourself to watch. You need to set yourself to watch. You know, Pastor Goma was talking um, at the beginning of this year about marital destinies. I know many people have keyed into that. That this year, your, your marital destiny is going to open up. There is a prayer dimension to that, but there is also a watching dimension. There is a watching dimension. I need to understand the configuration of my environment. I need to even ask myself, how many marriageable people are in my pool? Pick your phone and look. How many people who are, are, prospe- who are looking for a, a spouse who are single? I might pull. I might just moving around people who are already married. You got to watch. You got to watch. And because that begins to show you the areas where you need to make adjustments. If you don't know anybody that is not married, how are you going to, uh, what, how is that going to play out? So now you, can, you are more intentional about your social interactions. It, 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 I, I want someone this morning to understand that there is, there is a watching dimension. So if there is any area where you are not receiving signals, you need to ask the question, Holy Spirit, what should I be paying attention to? What should I, what, where should I do a, a bit more uh, uh, deep digging? What, what should I press more into? What should I become more conscious and aware of in my organization, in the business that I lead? What, what, what am I not watching? And what, how do I begin to watch? What, what journals should I subscribe to? What kind of news should I listen to? What associations should I be, belong to? How do I put myself uh, in, the, in, in the information stream so I'm aware of what is happening around me? And those are the decisions that, the, 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 that God wants us to make this morning. I got to be a watcher. I got to be a watcher. And I want someone to pray and just, I just make a, a, a commitment to God. Lord, this year, this year, the, your word will not depart from my, my, my mouth. Your word will not depart from my heart. I'm going to diligently give attention to your word in the name of Jesus. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace. I receive grace to be invested in the study of your word. I'm not, I'm not going to run my life just based on my ideas, but I'm going to allow your word to guide me. I'm going to be intentional about studying. I'm going to be intentional about waiting on you. I'm going to be intentional about putting myself in a position where my spirit can be fed. Because that way, guidance is guaranteed. Thank you, Father. We give you praise in the name of Jesus. 
give you praise in the name of Jesus. Our Lord, I pray for anyone and everyone under the influence of this service today. I ask, Father, in the name of Jesus, that this, this season will be a season of divine guidance, will be a season of ordered steps in the name of Jesus. It will be a season of brighter paths for you in the name of Jesus. I pray for anyone who is currently experiencing any measure of confusion and I, I declare in the name of Jesus clarity comes uh, I declare in the name of Jesus clarity comes Lord open the eyes of their understanding open their ears and enable them to hear in the name of Jesus I, I, I pray that anyone that is lacking critical information to make decisions that as they step out this week their word will come uh, that which they need to act upon will be revealed in the name of Jesus. Uh, pray for anyone who is experiencing any form of containment or stagnation and who has been uh, hampered by their just lack of ability to, to discern uh, because they don't know. They don't know what they need to know. I pray that from this moment, from this moment, their capacity for discernment is enhanced in Jesus' mighty name. You will no longer waste time. You will no longer lose opportunities. In the name of Jesus, Thank you, Heavenly Father. And Lord, I pray for anyone that is listening to me right now this morning who is dealing with consequences of bad choices that they have made last year. I ask for grace and mercy. I pray for anyone right now who feels that they are permanently locked in a, in a negative situation because of a poor choice they've made. Maybe it's a relational issue, maybe it's a financial issue. Lord, we plead your mercy. And we ask for supernatural intervention. Stretch forth your hand and do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus. I pray that by your hand, you will rescue someone from trouble this morning. By your hand, you will deliver someone uh, from the fowler this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to pray for someone who is listening to me this morning who doesn't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. You know, we can't, this conversation about signals will not make sense to you um, if you are not spiritually aware, um, if, you are not, if you are not awake and alive in the spirit. And that's the starting point. You've got to know Jesus. Um, many people are going to be cheap victims of the enemy in 2023, largely because they don't know Jesus, largely because they don't have any relationship with him. And the Bible says there's a devil who goes about looking to you know, still kill, destroy. And so I want to pray with you this morning that you, they, they will not take advantage of you. There is an ark of safety that God has already preserved. And this ark was secured by Jesus Christ when he came and died for your sins and mine. This is a new year and it's an opportunity for a new beginning for you. God wants you to live a distinguished life. God wants to elevate you. He wants to use you for his glory. He wants to bless you. He wants to bless you more than you want to be blessed. He wants to transform your life. But you've got to trust him with that life. You've got to trust him to guide and to lead you. And so I want to extend to you an opportunity this morning to embrace the love of God. You are here at this service. You're not born again. You're watching me online. You're not born again. You have heard this message. But it doesn't mean much to you because you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to invite you into that experience. And if you're in this hall, I'll ask that you just lift your hand above your head while every head is bowed and eye closed. And I will pray with you. Just lift your hand above your head. I want to pray with you. And I, I don't want you to miss out on this opportunity. Just lift your hand above your head. If you are watching online, just indicate you want to come into your life to Christ. Jesus is eagerly looking to embrace you and lift you up and reposition you for greatness. Hallelujah. If your hand is up, I'll ask that you just rise on your feet wherever you are so I may see you. I'd like to pray with you. This is such a fantastic opportunity. Please don't let this moment pass you by. Please don't let this moment pass you by. I'd like you to rise on your feet wherever you are, whether you're at the back of a hall, you're in front of a hall, uh, or if you're online, just indicate, I want to give my life to Christ. Just rise on your feet. Jesus is knocking at the door of your heart. If you were once born again, but you are backsliding into sin, it's time for you to rededicate your life to Christ. It's time for you to commit to Christ again. And God is saying, this is a fresh opportunity. In another chance of... Uh, for you to get back on track. Don't walk out of this service the way you came. If you're that person, I ask that to rise on your feet and I want to pray with you very quickly. God bless you as you do that. God bless you as you honor him uh, with, with your heart this morning. Hallelujah. 
Would you say this prayer after me? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you today. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for my sins. And I know that you raised him up for my justification. Today, I, de I declare Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me. I declare that I'm saved. I declare that I'm born again. For in Jesus' mighty name, 